Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a 21 to 24 week pregnancy update. So like I said in my last video, I thought I would just do an update like maybe every four weeks just to let you know if there's been any changes or any additional information I might have or just basically like my pregnancy journey from those four weeks. So the last update, I didn't really have much to tell you and there isn't loads to tell you in this one either. Um, my 21st week was when we went for our scan. So normally you would have your 20 week scan at 20 weeks. However, there was a mix up between or a lack of communication between my midwife and the hospital that I'll be delivering at. My midwife hadn't sent my referral through for my 20 week scan. So I was a bit late. I had to chase the midwife up which I was a bit concerned about because I just feel like I've kind of been left out a little bit. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I think with everything going on and the pandemic and stuff like that, obviously we're not getting the service that we would normally get, I suppose, which is fine. It just worried me that I hadn't heard anything. So anyway, I phoned the midwife. She then sent the referral through and I got my appointment for my 20 week scan, which was 21 weeks and two days. So yeah, this is the baby. There wasn't great pictures because he just wouldn't sit still. The lady had an awful time trying to get some pictures or um, even just some measurements because he just kept moving. But yeah, it was just really nice to see and although we haven't got the greatest scan pictures, it was a nice memory to keep because Derek was also allowed in. He, he wasn't allowed in at the 12 week scan but he was at this scan which was really really nice and really comforting I think and yeah she confirmed that we are having a little boy we told her that we had done the private scan but she said if she could she would have a look just to make sure and thankfully although I know these things still aren't 100% accurate but yeah he is still a boy so the baby was doing all good the measurements were fine there was nothing abnormal, everything looks good and healthy and he was heading in the right direction with regards to weight and stuff like that so there was no concerns whatsoever. And yeah, apart from that, at 21 weeks after the scan, so we had the scan on the Tuesday or the Thursday I think it was, and on the Sunday I had went to the toilet. This is a bit TMI if people get a bit grossed out so yeah, I'm just giving you a bit of a warning now if you don't like to hear anything like this saying please switch off because it is a bit of information maybe TMI for some people so yeah basically at 21 weeks on the Sunday we had been at the park I think we were out and about anyway and we had came home and in the afternoon I went to Lou and I had seen some blood on a tissue I tried not to panic because I thought maybe I was seeing things. It wasn't fresh blood and it may not have been very noticeable as such. But I was almost conscious that there was something there. And it, funnily enough, on that morning, I had said to Derek, I feel like the baby is like lying on my bladder somewhere because I feel like I, I need the toilet all the time. And even when I was going to the toilet, it didn't feel like a relief. So yeah, I'd went to the toilet and wiped and then throughout the afternoon into the evening when I was going to the toilet it wasn't always there but in the evening when I went there was a little bit of fresh blood and of course you start to panic, you think the worst thing and although people t tell you to think positive and you're trying to keep a positive mind frame, the worst thing is in the back of your mind and you, you just, you start to panic no matter how much you try and calm yourself down. So that evening we phoned the triage ward at my local hospital where I'll be delivering and I just basically, I couldn't even explain it to the lady. I was absolutely hysterical and when I say hysterical I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk on the phone. When I felt like I was getting myself together I was just absolutely breaking down. So Derek eventually had to take the phone from me and he just explained to the midwife what I had found and how I was feeling and stuff like that. and. They said basically because it wasn't fresh blood and stuff like that normally what they would do is just leave us in case we were obviously more concerned about it. 
but because I had got myself so upset and I was in such a state they wanted to see me just to make sure that everything was okay. So that evening, Sophia had literally, she was in her bed and she was just on her tablet for a little bit and we went and got her ready and we took her down to my parents and then we went into the hospital and, <clears throat> excuse me, it was, again, obviously with the whole COVID situation, it's a bit of a weird atmosphere because you're walking into this labour ward and you can hear and see like everybody else's babies and stuff like that, but it was, it was also still very surreal, like nobody was on like the corridors or stuff like that it was it was very very strange but we got put into a room the midwives came and done a urine sample they took that away they had asked me to wear a sanitary towel from when I left the house till I got to the hospital and when we got there it was absolutely clear so they took that away they'd done the urine sample and they took that away from me as well the doctors then came in and they'd done an internal check down below obviously which was not very nice I say it wasn't very nice it wasn't like uncomfortable or anything like that but they basically come in and they take a swab down below just to make sure that your cervix hasn't opened and that like your fluid is still there and the most awkward situation is because they have to insert the swab for five minutes and then they have to take it out and then they have to put it in this fluid for another five minutes so that they can make sure that your fluid is still intact. So you're basically lying there with your legs wide apart. Derek was to the right side of me and I had the midwife who was standing over me with the swab tucked in. And then there was an additional trainee midwife who was there as well. So you lose all your dignity when you're having a child. Like, let me tell you, I had no fear whatsoever when I was giving birth to Sophia. But you kind of forget about that. And then you go into something like this and it kind of reminds you that you're heading for a whole different level of things. So anyway, we just stood there. They stood there. I lay there. Derek sat there. And we tried to make the most awkward conversation for five minutes. Anyway, after all of that, thankfully, my fluid was still intact, my cervix was still fine, everything looked good, but they wanted the doctors to come in and double check anyway, so that was fine. They, then the doctors came in, and it was a male doctor who was very young, and I'm just like, oh my god, like, I can't believe this is happening to me, like, obviously Derek was there, which is fine, but it's just like... <sighs> I don't know, when you see a man and he's gonna look at your bits, it's like, I think you always get that feeling. Anyway, he was the nicest person, but he was wait waiting for his female colleague, which was amazing, because it was hard that I was gonna do the other check. Um, but it didn't help, because he was still standing at the bottom of the bed whilst this internal check was going on. Anyway, the doctor double-checked my cervix again. Everything was absolutely fine. It looked brilliant. Everything was still where it should be. And the urine sample came back and it did show that I had a urine infection. So when the midwife first came in and she told me that it might be a urine infection, she did say that they would give me antibiotics and stuff. However, when I asked the doctor, like, what's the next step? Like, what do we do? They said basically I would phone the midwife on Wednesday because they would have my results in and they they wanted to check that there was no thrush on the swab and if there if it wasn't thrush and it was a urine infection then I would get antibiotics which I find quite weird because I didn't understand why you would wait for those results to come back if you already knew it was a urine infection kind of thing and not give me antibiotics. Anyway, we got home. It was like the early hours of the morning. So we were just like, I was absolutely emotionally and physically drained. I think that whole situation, like I said, you just, you think the worst, which is horrible. And you try and train your brain into thinking that it's okay. But I had never ever experienced any spotting or anything like that, anything blood related with Sophia during my pregnancy. So this was a first for me. I know it's very, very common. And that's what the midwife had said to us on the phone. Bleeding or spotting is very, very common. 
as long as you're not in like your first 12 weeks and it's not fresh blood constantly then they're not highly concerned but to tell somebody that who has a baby in their stomach and try and get somebody to calm down is just I, I don't understand how anybody could be that calm about that situation I don't know maybe if you're used it from previous pregnancies you you would be fine but for me I just overreacted I was really concerned I was concerned about the baby and I just wanted to make sure everything was okay the other thing they done was they monitored the baby's heartbeat and stuff like that just to make sure there, there was still a heartbeat there and it was fine and he was moving away and he was absolutely fine but yeah it was a very scary scary situation being in that hospital at that time but when you get the kind of reassurance from the doctors and the midwife that everything's fine you're kind of like right okay good so we went home and I had never and have never suffered from a urine infection I have no idea what they feel like I have I couldn't tell you the symptoms of them because it's nothing that I've ever had to kind of look into but when we came home earlier of Monday morning I had woken up, I phoned in to work just to basically explain to my manager that um, I wasn't going to be in that day. I was working from home anyway but I just, I didn't feel well enough to get up and start working. I was absolutely exhausted and just everything had taken it out of me. So I got up and phoned my manager, explained to her what had happened and I then decided I was going to try and have a nap just to try and get some more sleep. I was absolutely exhausted. So... I went back to sleep for maybe like half an hour to an hour and I woke up and I just felt like this pain was getting worse and worse and I said to Derek I was like I need to phone the doctors because if this is a urine infection and I can get antibiotics I would prefer to get them because it's just so uncomfortable like I didn't feel uncomfortable on the Sunday I just knew that, that something didn't feel right I just thought maybe the baby was lying on my bladder but by Monday after or Monday morning uh, into the afternoon, I could totally tell that if this is what like people complain about urine infections, that I totally get it. So I phoned the doctor. They let me take a urine sample down there, and then they tested it for me. And quite rightly, like the midwife had said on the Sunday, it was definitely a urine infection. And thankfully, the doctor that we're now with because we've moved is just amazing. We have had no concerns or worries about them at all. They've been so, so good to us. They prescribed us medication and I got to go and pick it up that evening or that afternoon, sorry. And you have to take four a day. So I only got to take two that night. But even after the first one, I cannot express to you the relief that I had like my mum had kept telling me because she's prone to them once you take that first antibiotic like you will tell the difference and I kept thinking like how can antibiotics kick in that quickly just could not imagine it oh my gosh they kick in that quickly the relief obviously like the weird pain was still there but it was such a relief so yeah, what I would say is if you've never experienced a urine infection, there is all different kinds of different symptoms and stuff like that. Mine was, I felt like my bladder was never empty. It felt constantly full. When I went to the toilet, it wasn't like a stinging pain. It was just kind of like an uncomfortable pain, but it didn't hurt. But it almost felt like I've still got more to go but it's just not happening, it's not coming out. And then, like I said, as it progressed, I then started to feel like pain down towards like the bottom of my stomach. And then when I was going to the toilet, it did start becoming a little bit more uncomfortable. And they say that spotting or bleeding during a urine infection is quite common, which I didn't know either. So yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. I'm just so grateful and thankful that everything was okay. And yeah, it's just, it, it was a really scary experience. It's not something that you want to experience, but I was almost thankful that it was only a urine infection and nothing more sinister. But yeah, it would have been nice not to have it, but at least I kind of know 
what I'm looking for now. If I did feel like it was a urine infection, I wouldn't necessarily like panic instantly. However, the nurses, the doctors and the midwives did both advise me that at any time, if you get any spotting that you're worried about to contact the triage unit ASAP, it doesn't matter if you feel stupid, just do it because obviously they want to monitor and make sure that the baby's okay. So yeah, that they were absolutely phenomenal. But I have to be honest, from then, nothing else has changed. I am getting bigger and bigger. Um, my stomach is certainly expanding. What else? I'm not sleeping or I feel like I'm not sleeping. My sleep is very, very, very broken at the moment. So during the day, I'm absolutely exhausted. But I don't want to nap because the time I finish work, I have to go and pick Sophia up. And then by the time I come home, like it's too late to nap. And when I nap, I could nap for a very, very long time. It's not like I could just do an hour. I'm so, so tired. I have tried sleeping with a pregnancy pillow. Obviously you can see like that grey one there, that's what I've been using. I've been using like just our normal single pillows. I've been using the duvet cover, like just kind of crunching it up and using that. I've been using the little pillow, I've used the big pillows. And yeah, just I get uncomfortable with a big like maternity pillow because I feel like it falls off the bed or I'm constantly moving from side to side so I then need to move the covers off so I can move the pillow to the left hand side and then pull the covers back up and then vice versa for the other side so yeah sleeping at the moment seems non-existent so I don't know if that's my body trying to tell me like I'm getting prepared and you're not getting any sleep anytime soon so that is a bit tough but apart from that everything else has been really really good I think I've I've been really, really lucky with this pregnancy as well. I was really lucky with Sophia's pregnancy. But yeah, I just overly feel blessed and grateful for the experience that I've had so far. And hopefully it just continues like that as well. But I would just like to say if anybody has any questions or you want to ask anything or you would like some advice on something, please pop a wee question down below or head over to my Instagram and pop me a DM if you want to know anything else, if I, if you feel like I can help you at all. Like I've said previously, this is my second pregnancy, my second baby, but it feels like the first, it's been so long since we've had Sophia, so I feel like I'm learning all over again, and they say that no pregnancies are the same and no babies are the same, so we shall see. So far I'd say like things have been slightly different with this pregnancy than with Sophia's, but yeah, if you have any problems, please just pop them below and let me know. So I will go ahead and give you a bum shot. I have never done this and I feel so blooming nervous for some reason. I don't know why. My body is very different because I am a bigger girl, plus size. My bump is very different to a lot of other people. So please do not judge. Please do not comment any nasty comments. This is just me. But... I just thought, do you know what, I want other people to feel comfortable enough as well and if you are plus size and you feel like your body's not the same as everybody else's, it's not, everybody's body is different and I have suffered that a little bit by thinking, oh my gosh, I don't look like a normal per like pregnant person and, but I don't and nobody does, there's not like a pregnant person's body, we're all different. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you my bump and let you know, or let you see what it looks like. So, there we are. I'd say he's sitting quite high at the moment. Um, I just look like... <laughs> I just look like a big round ball. How funny is that? But yeah, I'm definitely getting bigger. He's still moving like absolute crazy. It's amazing because Sophia can now feel him as well, which is so exciting. She's like, she gets so excited when she feels him as well, which is really, really nice. And sometimes it just almost feels like he's about to pop out my skin. Like if he's, I'm assuming he must have like his back up to my stomach and it genuinely feels like he's going to pop out. It's like, it feels so, so tight, but there's also nothing more special 
than peeling that honestly I just yeah it's amazing I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you all later bye